On the heels of a wave of new device reviews and a busy week of technology news, we've got stories this midterm week, ranging from phone manufacturers cheating on exams to copying their neighbor's paper, and some just plain old excelling. The happenings from all three major platforms, plus the editor-in-chief's thought thread and your listener mail, coming in the next 90 minutes on episode 064 of the Pocket Now Weekly, the once-a-week audio podcast from Pocket Now, where we discuss smartphones, tablets, and the state of mobile technology in 2013. I'm your host, Michael Fisher, editorial director at Pocket Now. Hello. And today I'm joined for the first time in literally months by editor in chief Brandon Miniman. Welcome back to the show, sir. Oh, uh, hello. And also by everyone's favorite number cruncher and Android uh, figurine collector, senior editor Taylor Martin, who's always here. Hey, man. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> oh, special guest what? Cleveland Brown. And yes, oh, special oh, guest we... Mike Henry is on the show. He's here today? He's here yeah, today. yeah, absolutely. He's always here. He's always here. Oh. He's always with us in our thoughts. Uh, Brandon, it's, it's been seriously forever, so it is very nice to have you back on the show. Are things going well with your new, your new family unit? Things are going well with the new family unit. The the baby is uh, getting close to consistently sleeping through the night, and as new parents know, the sleep thing is probably the biggest challenge to the whole, you know, deal. I've heard that. Yeah, that's that's the the word on the street. I, I think uh, my sister got lucky. Uh, she had a child a couple weeks ago, well, a couple months ago, and uh, the baby sleeps through the night pretty well. Actually, the baby sleeps. All the time. I mean, it was a preemie, but that's uh, what I was told. Nope. That's what I was told. I was. I was told I was a. I was an awesome baby who always behaved. Oh, a uh, premium, a premium preemie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, that's I've never not heard this nice. Baby cry. No, I've it's never not. heard the baby cry. That's cool, and that, that means Taylor, you're like a newly minted uncle, even though you were an uncle before, right? Yeah. That's well, cool. Well, my, my nieces and nephews lived in Alaska and Hawaii, so I can't really visit them. So, yeah. yeah. You're the, well, you're the continental uncle. Yeah. <laughs> I always wanted to be an uncle. I was like, when I was like a teenager, I, I didn't really have aspirations to be anything else but a, uh, a, but a cool uncle who like had a sweet mustache and like, you know, <laughs> brought the fun when he came over. Can I just say that if I could grow a mustache, I most definitely would. You can't grow a mustache? I can't. Really? I mean, I mean, well, I probably could try, but Brandon, like three days in, he's like, dude, shave. So, so. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. We do have very, very strict guidelines on how people should look on the on the pocket now broadcasts. Yeah, strict, yeah, uh, strict guidelines. Yeah, absolutely. Like shave and unbutton that top button, sir. Yeah, you need four. You need a hat or four metric tons of hair gel or fake glasses, but you can't do all three. Hey, yeah, listen, but, uh, listen. You're you're a star, and uh, you know, uh, thank, <laughs> thanks thanks to your own efforts, and and maybe thanks to a couple of suggestions regarding the number of buttons you should have open, and the, the <laughs> kind of he- headgear you have, and the kind of of grooming that I do on my four chest hairs. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's talk about uh, something that's happening later in the day. Speaking of broadcasts, Taylor Martin and I will be appearing on the Pocket Now You review this afternoon. Meaning, since the weekly is recorded ahead of time, that's probably already happening. If you're listening to this podcast right now, so if you're listening to the weekly on release day, just look at your watch and make sure it's not somewhere around 4 p.m. Eastern time. Because if it is, uh, save the weekly for later and join us on the You Review, where we are reviewing Taylor what. Uh, the Galaxy Note three and the LG G two. Yeah, the, the GG two. You the, can't you can't just do LG G two. No, you LG G two. LG G two. Yes, that's all. That's all. LG says it. Yeah, I know. And uh, we also should note, by the way, and I just updated the post to reflect this. Taylor, you are going to be the one with the Note three because I just sent ours back to Negri Electronics. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, I've got that and the G two. So yeah. Oh, that's lovely. And I have the G two too. An additional program. The LG G22. <laughs> the LG G22. LG G222. What, what, Brandon? Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, just an additional programming note: the uh, our iPhone 5s review will be up uh, momentarily. That is outstanding. Uh, that is coming from our own Brandon Miniman. The video review has been up for a little while now, right? It has, and there's a little preview. I gave it. Uh, well, you, if, if you've seen the video review, you know I gave it a, a nine out of ten, uh, which is a few yeah. ticks better than than the five C review, which Michael did, which is an eight point four. Right. And um, it's 
great way to stay in shape. <laughs> so we are going to talk about the the 5S because it's an important device that we really want to. I, I have a couple of questions for you, Brandon. But before we get there, for the first time in a very long time, we have the editor in chief's thought thread. Brandon, drum, drum take it away. <laughs> What I like about your drum intros is that they are consistent. Like it's never improvised. It's like it's hard coded into your into your musical brain. I like it. Oh yeah. Well, the, the problem is with the baby now. I've got drums. I've been playing drums since I was in the fourth grade. I can't play drums anymore because the baby hates it. So oh. I gotta like. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to sell the drums so I can get like the electronic kind. You put headphones on and then I can you know. Anyway, so I just little. I, I'm sorry. I just flash forward to like 12 years in the future when like. Like, your daughter uncovers this, like, dusty drum set in, in the attic, and it's like, Dad, what's this? And you're like, oh, those. Well, let me see if I've still got it. And then you're the cool drummer dad all of a sudden. It's going <laughs> to be awesome. And she's, like, begging me to play. I'm like, oh, I'm terrible. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I sit down, and I'm like, and all the lights, like, come on. You've got, like, multicolored lights, and, and a fog machine inexplicably starts. And it's, it's just, yeah. like, on, on cue. It just Anyway, so I want to talk about the most unimaginative execution of a piece of technology that I've seen in a long time. And I haven't even seen it yet. I've seen some reviews of this product. We're going to get one in for review. With that introduction, do you guys know what I'm talking about? I have yeah. no idea only because, what you're talking about. Oh, only because you talked to me about this before. Oh, wait, yeah, now I totally do know what you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah. No, you don't have it right, Taylor. I don't? No. What I else th- could it Can I guess? Can yeah, I, I guess. Are you talking about the Samsung Galaxy Gear? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so. you threw me for a loop, man. Oh, sorry. I, yeah, I was going to talk about Dell tablets, but this it's just... Yeah, I didn't even bother putting them in the rundown. If you want to see them, though, listeners, they're on our site. Um, go ahead. So so this this smartwatch thing is, is a very big problem, meaning no one's really solved how we can take technology from our phone and get it into this tiny screen on our wrist. Pebble has done a pretty good job by making this device that really does a good job with notifications. It has really good power so that you don't have to charge it every day. And the screen really makes sense, uh, e-ink, so you don't have to turn on the display all the time. But Samsung has tried to, like take a Galaxy phone and stick it on your wrist. So that means, like, one day of battery life, which is so stupid. Uh, It's got apps. Like, a phone has apps, but all of the apps are generally terrible. Um, It's got this big, huge design that just is so incredibly cumbersome. And for people with small wrists, forget about it. You're going to be laughed at. Uh, And... And it has an abscess. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, the, the, the camera. The camera. The camera. <laughs> you, you know, I actually think that's one of the high points. I think it's pretty smart for them to build the camera into the into the uh, the wrist thingy. Well, but overall, put it in the worst spot. That's the only. No, yeah. I think it's in a pretty good good spot. I think it's a good spot. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the camera in a second. It's where the laser would go if it were <laughs> if it were Penny's computer watch. But go ahead. <laughs> What they literally did is, I don't know if you guys remember when the uh, couple generations ago, the the iPod Nano, uh, people were using them as wrist watches. And, and it didn't really work that well because it wasn't intended to be a wrist watch. And it had, you know, gestures. You would swipe it to the side to access apps. It's just like that. But it doesn't work well. And the reviews that I've seen so far have been absolutely terrible. And I can see why. Samsung just, this is so unimaginative. That so- it's no wonder. Yeah, and I, I don't think that it should be a, a necessarily a surprise to us now that uh, that the product has come out the way it has. And I want to repeat uh, what you already said, Brandon. We have not yet reviewed this device. We are still waiting on a demo unit, and we'll get one in. We, we handled it in Berlin, and we put it actually side by side with the Pebble and toyed with it for a little bit. But uh, since then, CNET has done a um, kind of a really cool, not an expose, but a you know a pretty in depth piece on how Samsung cobbled this thing together, and the company did it so quickly. I mean, normally it takes something like a, a year and a half to two years for a product like this to go from start to finish, and Samsung did it in something like I, I don't I, I don't like less than a year, which is outrageous. Um, I maybe I'll, I'll see if I can drop the link in the uh, in the dis- description for the podcast here, but so yeah, there are some some compromises. But when I put it on my wrist at IFA, the first thing that I encountered in terms of my feelings 
was surprised because it's not as big as it looks on the video. It actually is not. It looks like this big old cumbersome thing that is going to like if you fall in the water with it, it's going to drag you to the bottom. But it's it's not. It's 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 lighter than it looks. It's it's smaller than it looks. I agree, Brandon. I, I, it is bigger than I, I would prefer it, but it's not quite as awkward in the physical space. And then software is an entirely different story. I, I agree with you. But do, don't the third party apps excite you? Not no. really. I, I, you know what? You know what we really need, and some people are going to hate this. We need Apple to do this. We need Apple to create their own apps to show us, like, like in in with a lot of imagination and thought, uh, how a smartwatch could really work. And then, kind of like with the iPhone, open it up to third parties, and third parties can look at the built-in apps and say, "Okay, here's, here's, you know, this, uh, here's what it looks like when an app is done well. I'm going to copy that, but I'm going to apply it to my own kind of app thing." Well, but you don't think it's a good idea to to just open it, like do what Samsung has done, and just open up the SDK right away, so anybody. I mean, that's what Pebble did. You know, Pebble's like, "Here, have this SDK. Here's how you program for the Pebble smartwatch." And you know, lo and behold, almost overnight, we got awesome custom faces you know we got cool plugin app plugins and stuff like that yeah i mean the the thing about the thing about a watch a smart watch is that it doesn't necessarily have to be terribly smart because a screen is never going to be big enough unless you throw in a screen that's wider uh so it's landscape and wider which would look absolutely ridiculous and wouldn't fit on my wrist um (laughs) it'd be like that old samsung uh, watch phone that yeah i mean I mean, a Pip Boy would be cool if anybody knows what yeah, that is. Yeah, I do know what that is. That's funny. A Pip Boy would be awesome, but I mean, it's impractical. And so is this. I mean, you're not really going to be able to do a whole lot with a tiny display like that. Like that, it needs to be a peripheral, not a standalone device. And I think that's what people are trying to move towards. Is I mean, this is a peripheral. Yeah, it is. Yes, it it is. But Samsung's trying to do too much with it. It's like a mouse for your computer with fifty buttons. Uh, not for gaming, just for general use, and a display on a mouse. Like, why? You don't need that. And plus, the display is not always leveraged uh, intelligently. Like, when you get an, as I understand it, when you get an email on the watch, you can't read the email on the watch. Like, you get a notification, and then you have to pull out your phone to read the email. Uh, yeah, see, that, that doesn't that strike the purpose. me as a very good idea, especially when the screen is, like, twice as big as the Pebble screen, and I can read emails on my wrist with the Pebble. So there's that. But, you know, I, I, I agree there's a lot to, to dislike about the gear, starting with its price. I think 299 is way too high. But I think that oh, yeah. Samsung has some successes here in that it's introduced it. Once it busts the price down, I think this will be a little more compelling um, because they're introducing it with the right device, right? The Note 3 is, like, massive, and we'll talk about it in a second. And if there was a device that you were going to intro a peripheral with so that you don't have to pull your phone out of your pocket presumably as much, I've, I mean, I can't think of a better device to do it with than the Galaxy Note 3, except for maybe, like, the Galaxy Mega, you know? In the, in the, past, uh, in the past 24 hours, um, I've had trouble getting the Note 3 out of my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> what? Why? Because the edges are so sharp? No, because the back is, like, tacky. The, the black finish on oh, the back is thank is, the lord isn't that a good thing though yeah it is yeah. I mean, after, but i'm like after i have having, to use two hands to get it in my pocket you count <laughs> you count your blessings sir because the white one was so smooth i almost dropped it like five times oh I'm, I'm not complaining i'm just saying if there exactly what you were saying if there's a device where you need a peripheral it's this one yeah <laughs> yeah that, i mean it, it, it is a good point i would be more inclined to get a pebble with a galaxy note 3 well, I mean, that's what I'm t- trying out right now. Yeah, yeah, and I would be more inclined to get a Pebble regardless. Now, I, I will say this, though. Uh, another thing that Galaxy Gear has going for it is that Samsung designed it to work with the phone. And that sounds like a no-brainer, stupid remark, but um, the Pebble has some serious issues working with Samsung phones. Not because of the Pebble's fault, but... The folder be- is now open. Right. The, <laughs> the problem with, when you use a Pebble with a Samsung device is that TouchWiz requires um, the... Well, the Android requires that the accessibility features be turned on so the phone can communicate with the Pebble and pass information in a certain way via Bluetooth. But as a result of all of Samsung's add-ons, and I don't understand this. I, I would write an editorial about it if I had the time to do the research and find it out. I still want to do this. If somebody on the team has time to do this, it would be great. But if you enable Pebble on a Galaxy device, you have to disable things like AirView. You have to disable multi-screen for some stupid reason. What? Like, you have to disable yeah. AirGesture. All of this stuff has to be turned off. And some of it I get, like, maybe AirGesture I understand because 
I don't know, there's like a sensor package being used improperly or something like that. But why multi-screen? Why can't I run two apps side by side when the Pebble Accessibility Service is running? I don't get it. So anyway, yeah, or, or why does TalkBack have to be on when Pebble is on? Like, exactly. it doesn't make sense. You go home and you open a folder. The folder is now open. The Let folder is open. This. The folder yeah. is closed. Wait, th- that still happens on the Note 3? Uh, I haven't tried it. I haven't connected my Pebble to I it. I hope they've fixed that because that was a bug. So anyway, I hope, presumably you avoid those errors by using a device Samsung built for use with its smartphone, uh, with its Samsung smartphone. Right? I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see. But Brandon, you would never wear one, right? Mm, don't think so. What about what would they, what would they need to do for the Galaxy Gear two to 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 allow you to uh, carry one with pride? Well, it'd have to work with his iPhone five S. <laughs> that is another thing. It is locked down to the galaxies only. Yeah, it, it would have to be cross-platform, but, like, I don't know. I don't know the answer to the smartwatch question, like how it can make my life better. I think Pebble gives you a glimpse with the way it presents notifications, but it's got to be so much more than that. And, and um, yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be, be some time. The only thing that I wish I could do with my Pebble uh, that I can't is I wish I had a microphone, and I wish I could do, like, quick easy dirty google searches dirty so, google searches so you want to just do well, not dirty, dirty google searches dirty. on your wrist <laughs> quick and dirty like uh what's the weather going to be like tomorrow i don't need my phone for that if you know my pebble could do it using my phone perfect. as the, yeah this yeah stuff like That's, that that is perfect i mean if you can access you know um google now through your smartwatch or siri through your smartwatch that's like it's so it's such good stuff now like you can schedule appointments get the weather and look up information you should be able to do that without taking your phone out of your pocket i completely yep. agree and i will i feel constrained to point out even though i think s voice is one of the most horrible products in history uh, s voice works through through the galaxy gear so, you know, if you are one of the people who's found success with S Voice, as I occasionally do, like I'll just, like every like two weeks, I'll just pull out a Samsung device. I'm like, oh, let's see how S Voice handles this. And I'm like, okay, 30% of the time it gets close to what I want. I'm like, okay, great. So if, if you're one of the people who works well with S Voice, then it's a compelling thing. But I don't know. I think we're going to see some cool stuff from third party developers. Samsung's going to push this pretty hard i would imagine considering they're already in development on the the sequel of the watch i don't think they're going to let this go but history does not um is not kind to this kind of scenario can you think of a single device that had an open sdk where developers swooned to it and made all kinds of great stuff i can't think of anything any any situation? Wait, that's a kind of a broad thing, right? Like any device with an open SDK? No, I can't. Any think any, any single device? Think you know, uh, Kyocera Echo or like um, oh, the, oh the, yeah, you know where the, where there's like an SDK uh, to to take advantage of certain key features, and but there's only one device that will work, and I can't think of any device that the developer community has put their weight behind because it's a single device. Yeah, and it, 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 that's not going to be the gear right now, especially as once again not at three hundred bucks. But yeah. once that price comes down, once they push the second one out the door and then introduce something else, because the Galaxy Gear is a wonderfully flexible brand name, so they can make like an you know an anklet, a smart anklet, or like you know a smart <laughs> belt or whatever. You know, I'm sure they'll, they'll try. <laughs> yeah. or like a, you know a, a Samsung sash that you wear over your shoulder and it has a screen that tells other people what your Twitter handle is or some dude, dumb crap like that. Like an I, entire I, helmet instead yeah. of just glasses, just the right. whole helmet. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I can envision a lot of these wearables falling under the Galaxy Gear brand and if the if the SDK is flexible enough to allow you to de- develop for all of them or if they they write it as such then yeah then we might be at seeing the seeing the underwhelming introduction of a product line that in the future will be quite compelling and if there's a company that can do it I Samsung is is probably probably it but you I agree Brandon I, it's not I don't think it's a mature product right now at all and I don't, I don't think anyone does <clears throat> I'm still excited yeah. to get one cuz I'm a nerd have you um? Have you guys seen? I'm, I'm reading something, uh, or I, I've I've seen something about this Galaxy Note three tiny screen mode. Have you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you do a gesture, so from within any app that doesn't have like a sliding uh, pane, uh, so you can't do it in the settings app because, well, I guess you can. Yeah. You uh, can. But what you do is you take. Yeah, you can. Uh, one hand, and you slide your thumb from the edge of the screen to the middle and back. And uh, it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> but what it does is it makes um, – it, it shrinks the actual, like, window that you're working in. So 
the software. Like it, it's like it almost looks like a desktop where it shrinks the whole entire window. Um, I don't know how to better articulate that. Can you try, Michael? I cannot. I have not made use of the feature. Uh, I think it is smart on a device this big to build these features in, and Samsung has always been at the, the forefront of this. It's like, hey, dock the keyboard to one side of the screen, or you know, make the keypad smaller and put it in the corner. And this is a natural extension of that. That's pretty cool. Maybe It's, you, pretty, it's really cool. Yeah, maybe, Taylor, you can cover that. Oh, uh, accessibility oh voice God. strikes again. Oh, oh God. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> Send her away. It's going nuts. I can't do anything. Okay. Okay, okay button. Oh, my God. This is horrible. This is yeah. my worst nightmare. Please, please stop it. Make it stop. Make it stop. <laughs> Just sh- throw it away. Put it in the trash can. God. All right. What so, is going on? Right, while, 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 Taylor, on. while Taylor wrangles his Galaxy Note 3, let's move on from the thought thread. Thank you, Brandon. This is. Uh, I'm really looking forward to continuing this conversation because I'm just so nerding out. And, Brandon, since you're here, I will mention that uh, Pocket Now has made a uh, – made an effort and will continue to make an effort to cover wearables uh, early and often. And we're going to stumble from time to time as we have with the gear, but I think we're going to make up for lost time and have some really good good stuff coming. So stay tuned for more wearable stuff. And Apple's going to have some more wearable stuff coming down the pipe here very soon. But before we get there, Brandon, very quickly, can you encapsulate the iPhone 5S for us? Yeah, I think... Uh, I think- do you hear it yelling? What is that sound? It did. It was shouting through the wall as though someone were irate. Oh, no. It's just my pizza's here. My morning pizza. Hey! Hey, Luigi. When pizza's right, so, on a bagel, you can have pizza anytime. That's the rule. So the 5S, uh, I, I think that the summary here is it's slightly better, but slightly better is good enough. But if you're coming from an iPhone 5, slightly better is not enough to compel you to upgrade. If you're going from another phone to the 5S, the 5S is is a really fantastic phone, and it has those compromises uh, that everyone knows about the small screen. It doesn't have a 1080p display. The funniest thing is since the HTC One came out and these 1080p devices, I can now see pixels on the 5S, almost as if my vision has improved. <laughs> your, <laughs> you, your vision has always been crazy mutant, like superhuman vision. So I, this will not prevent me from, from snapping up a 5S, but go, go ahead. Is that a pixel I see on my 4K television from across the room? <laughs> Better not, Barry. Damn, Sony. No, seriously, the, the, the 5S does feel a little bit dated compared to some of these other devices, but the kind of person that's going to buy an iPhone is a different kind of buyer. They don't, you know, they don't really care about the flexibility of Android. They don't really care about a bigger screen. They just want a phone that is great with one hand, that can do everything well. And the 5C is not too different from that either, but the 5S adds you know, those, those three or so features that makes it different, which I don't even think are that compelling. Can I like? Can I m- mention something? I talked about this in the five C review about screen size, Brandon. And like, you're right. Um, a lot of people are not are, are not going to care about Android's flexibility. They're not going to care about being a power user. They want their phone to just work. But I got to say, the screen size argument is a very interesting one because <clears throat> I'm of the opinion, along with uh, a lot of other people, I think that the Android ecosystem's kind of knee-jerk reaction of these manufacturers to compete on size was pretty unimaginative, right? It's like, oh, back in the day, years ago, it's like, oh, Apple's got a 3.5-inch screen. All right, we're going to go bigger. Oh, they went bigger. All right, well, we're going to keep on going bigger. And then and yet another manufacturer. You know what? We're going bigger than that. So that's kind of We're really, going to go real big. Yeah. <laughs> Bigger's better, right? But <clears throat> at the same time, as I don't respect that approach, I have to, uh, well, at the same time as I don't like that approach, I have to respect it because every time that I get a new phone, which is quite often, uh, whether it's for review or for personal use, it, it tends to be bigger and people keep reacting the same way. Um, my normal friends will see me pull out this device and I'm like, wow, that's, that's a big thing. And it's kind of that mix of, you know, when people are, are giving you that reaction that's kind of like, it, there's a little bit of horror in it. Where it's like, oh, wow, you know? It's yeah. like, you're not totally sold on this, I get it. But there's also, like, that 25% hint of, 
of real intrigue that you can see sitting behind the the eyeballs where it's like wow you're really amped on this big screen i can tell i'm surprised you still get that in 2013 or whatever year uh, the the gm at this office space did the same thing he he asked to see the note 3 yesterday and i showed it to him he's like wow that's that's really that's big yeah and, and then the conversation was kind of over <laughs> Yeah, like, well, okay. so, and some yeah, sometimes like, it sucks ends for you. there, but sometimes often for me, people are like, "Let me, let me see it." This, and then they'll hold it and they'll be like, "This is awesome." And it doesn't matter what it is; it can be a, cra- a device I think is crap, it can be a device I think is awesome. But if it's big, it gets people's attention. Like, I mean, there, there's room for about 50 million stupid jokes in here, but like seriously, like the size is an instant differentiator. Like when you're when you're looking at at a at a consumer product like this when they when they hold it in their hand they notice the difference there you go there's <laughs> and there we are <laughs> it's um you know it uh you know they, they say size doesn't, doesn't matter <laughs> so all right so and i made this point when blackberry released their 4.2 inch display on the z10 and um, I wrote an editorial about it, and then I covered this again in my uh, "The iPhone is still not for me" piece, where it's like, it's finally, finally, the stupid jumbo phone lobby has won me over, and finally, I can't, I can't deal with a screen that's smaller than, say, four point five inches, which is. Go, go use I a, hate saying that. Go use the Z Ultra for two days. Two days. I'm never going to use the Z Ultra. Oh my god! Oh, that's <laughs> this thing is so absurdly large, like. Yeah. I don't mind carrying a small tablet with me. I really don't. Like I like carrying an iPad mini with me or the Nexus 7. Uh, but the fact that a phone, that thing is used to make calls and it's something that you have to take with you because a tablet is something you can leave behind. You don't need to take <laughs> a tablet with you everywhere yeah. you go. That thing is a tablet. It is a tablet. It Which says is- phone but it is a tablet. And normally and I, I would counter you, I, not counter you, but I would, I would jump on the back of that and say, Taylor, you're absolutely right. What someone needs to do is make a tablet with a detachable phone. So you can take the phone with you and leave the tablet at home if you want to, or you can take them both. But Asus did that and nobody bought it. So. Well, nobody bought it because it was like $1,000. <laughs> it was pretty expensive. <laughs> it was so expensive. It would have been a great idea if they were like, this is only a shell. This thing is just a display and a battery. So we'll sell it for you know 100 bucks yeah. or 80 bucks or something. And you, know, you buy your phone and it works. No, they were like, this part is $300 and the phone is $600. Like, no. I think in the, I think in the new millennium, we're going um, to see a device that um, – we kind of fantasize about which it it somehow is a phone, but you can like unfold it to be a tablet. Ooh, yes. Uh, all that all all this popping in my mind right now is uh, Gizer Echo again. You know what? And, oh, yeah. No, let, don't do that. You'll hurt yourself. I'm, I'm dying inside. Do you, Taylor? I want you to look out your window and just watch for war drivers. Okay, watch for people just kind of squatting on your lawn using your Wi-Fi connection because your internet connection sucks right now. I will I will tell you that. Oh well, it might be the thirty phones I have connected to my. I think there. Yeah, I think, I think that's your problem. I think that's your issue. Yeah. Let me turn off internet. Turn, turn off Wi-Fi. Uh, so, Brandon, your review of the five S will be up today. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Good. Well, I'm going to read that when it goes live, and I'm going to then return to the Apple Store as I do every other day, and just play with the fingerprint scanner because it's a lot of fun. And we're going to talk about the fingerprint scanner in the listener mail section, but uh, I wish I'd done this segue a little differently. The iWatch rumors are continuing to grow fast and furious. Apple has this is confirmed that Apple has recruited uh-huh. the designer of the Nike Fuel Band for you know, work on the iWatch project, right? Yeah, I've had a Fuel Band and it's a really cool product. What is um, the Fuel Band? So it's it's a peripheral for uh, exercising. It tracks your movements and everything uh, kind of ambiguously. So it's like a jawbone so, up or a Fitbit? Yeah. So everything you do, every motion earns fuel points is what they're called. And uh, those can somehow be calculated and translated into calories and different things. Okay. Um, steps, calories, and, and how far you've walked. But uh, it seemed to be pretty accurate, at least as far as I could tell, in how many steps I took and everything. But it was on your wrist. So it actually had software to... Um, counteract you couldn't just like sit there and shake your hand in the air all day uh, it, <laughs> right. it would it know that you're just that, right yeah it would know that you're sitting there shaking your hand in the air not actually doing anything so it it measures distance in all three um it actually dimensions is, yeah. yeah and 
So that's functionality, but what about design? I mean, I'm, I'm looking at pictures of the Nike Fuel Band, and I am struck by how high quality this hardware design is and the, how excellent the presentation is in the retail packaging. If you just Google uh, Nike Fuel Band, you can go to the, the actual site and just yeah, see I, how well the product is presented. Of course, you've owned one, but I'm just telling listeners. Yeah, I, I pre-ordered one, and I couldn't wait for it to come in. My mom wanted one, so we pre-ordered two, and uh, I used it for about two weeks. But, but I mean, uh, design-wise, the thing is awesome, um, except for the fact that it, it kind of feels like a handcuff. I don't know what handcuffs actually feel like, but if I were to imagine what they <laughs> yeah. feel like, you mean yeah, wait, you nice haven't been, you haven't been arrested, Taylor? I mean, <laughs> come on, Taylor. <laughs> well, not not since I you know you didn't remember. But, uh, <laughs> well, is, is, so yeah, <laughs> so, uh, I, I get that it feels weird on the hand. I'm just I keep looking at the thing and it's it, rigid. It, I've seen it in person and it just looks so cool, especially when the the display the comes out. Exactly right. The, it's yeah. this purposefully low low resolution um, like dot matrix array with a yeah, the big white. old white area and a colored area. Go ahead. The design is is awesome. Uh, the way that the the clasp on the inside of the watch, so on the bottom side, on the inside of your wrist, the clasp is actually a USB uh, drive. Like it 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 is a USB drive. So it's a uh, yeah. You plug it into your computer. That's how you charge it. And uh, the design is is phenomenal. Whoever came up with this is is and pretty good. And I hope it's the guy that Apple got because and it, right exactly. And I guess the guy the, um what what is his name. Mr. Schaefer is his name. Henry. Henry. Ben. Ben. Ben Schaefer. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his, his name uh, properly, but he worked on the design of it. That's the the word that we're that we've gotten, and I I think this is one of the best wearables, one of the best looking wearables I've ever seen. So when you combine that with the rumors that um, <laughs> the sort of ever present rumor that Apple's iWatch is going to be the first one with a flexible display. We sort of expected to see this from Samsung with the Galaxy Gear. Obviously, we didn't see that because they were pushing the thing out the door faster than, like, a smelly kid. I don't know how that metaphor works. A smelly but, kid with lice? Yeah. <laughs> can you what? You, you can, can, you, you can, can I just say something? Yeah, thank you. Um, so it, it irks me. I tweeted this last night. Uh, why is everyone still confusing flexible display with a curved display? Now, obviously, the display has to be curved to be – or flexible to be curved – but it doesn't necessarily mean that the display is going to be, you know, non-rigid. Because you know, it's flexible and then it's going to sit in that position most likely. Right. Because well, the materials because around it aren't going to flex. Flexible is a very, very powerful adjective. And people, you say flexible display and people instantly think back to sci-fi movies and TV shows from the late 90s. Where it's and like, they puke rainbows. It's, it's awesome. But yeah. I think it's kind of glorified and, and it's, it's marketing jargon is what it is. It's not even that because nobody's pushing any products with it integrated yet. So, yeah, wow. I don't think it needs to, like, twist and turn. But it, buzz. But for a watch, um, the, for some of the first renders we saw of the Galaxy Gear, which turned out to be fake, or at least just concept renders, it showed a curved display, which basically wrapped around the wrist. And for a, for a thing you wear on the wrist, a curved display, I, I can't... Makes a lot of sense. It makes a ton of sense. And if if we are to see that, number one, I think Apple's going to be the one to bring it to us. And number two, I will wait in line for it. I, I do well, not care. Samsung is, what, the first to create the flexible display, at least on a small AMOLED panel? Uh-huh. It would have to use an AMOLED panel, if I'm not mistaken. So what's the problem with that? Is, is Apple going to use AMOLED? I think and, it's and sacrifice their yes perfect at, you're near perfect color reproduction. You're talking no, 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 about no. you're talking about the company that shipped the iPad Mini with a pixel <laughs> density of like thirty pixels per inch. Here's no no here's, here's what it's going to be. Fair enough. They're, they're going to use their standard LCD. It's going to be flexible, and then they're going to have kinetic uh, motion to recharge the battery and give it great battery life. <laughs> People are going to be oh, walking God. down the street and just like wiggling their wrists like they do with their citizens. Oh wait, they don't. And then and then they're going to introduce that same technology into the uh, iPhone six. And then the society is going to turn into one big dance party. This is this is the the plan. It will be oh. hilarious. It will be hilarious because you'll see people at like a party late at night, like uh, dancing around with their phone. What are you doing? Oh well, you know, if I just <laughs> dance for ten more minutes, I get seven percent. I can, I can call my mom, have her pick me up. Yeah. Did you, have you speaking of charging phones? Have you guys seen that that phone that lets you charge your phone by uh, via campfire? What? What? 
there's there's some kind of thermal to electro um, something converter, electromechanical or something that lets you st- like if you're camping, you can start a fire and use this device, which will transmute the heat into energy that it then uses to charge your mobile device. That sounds pretty stupid to me. Does this come with a witch? <laughs> it comes with, it comes with a witch hanging uh, kit. Witch burning no, I kit. just I, this is black magic. This isn't real. Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't know. I'll try and find it. It's a pretty cool thing. My I found it. Send me the link. Oh, you did. It's called God, Flame yeah. Store. Nice. It's a great product name. Yes, I I understand Google and how it works, Michael. <laughs> Shut up. Go. I'm gonna go. Bing, I'm gonna go Bing something. Um, so it on. The, let's let's close out the iOS category with a kind of broader story about platforms in general. Taylor Martin did a deep dive into the terrifying world of mathematics recently, and um, mm. as usual, he's being rewarded for his efforts by a lot of people whining about nothing in the comments, but a lot of yeah. people also <laughs> being appreciative as well and uh, thanking you for your hard work. And I joined those people while frowning upon the others who only want to fight about whether their platform is better than the next guy's. Taylor, you investigated games, apps, storage, cloud storage options on the three major platforms, and you basically just took all of them together in each category, mashed them all up, and said, here's what it would cost to buy 100% of each one of these categories on each platform. And you found some interesting stuff, didn't you? Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty compelling. Um, okay, to, to preface this, the people that say I'm wrong are saying that, okay, I said Windows Phone is the cheapest platform because um, the average apps, the top 10 apps, uh, top 10 games um, on Windows Phone were all cheaper. But I chose six random games, and those random games just happen to have a higher average on Windows Phone than the others. So everybody's like, oh, you're wrong, you're stupid, you don't know what you're doing. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the the easy way to put it, um, I had the top 100 games or not top. I'm getting confused. Top 100 apps on all three platforms, and I added all of them up. Uh, the difference was actually pretty impressive. Uh, all top 100 apps on Windows Phone was 173 dollars. Mm. It was 223 on iOS and almost 400 dollars on Android. Um, so the average there is is definitely. A big difference, yeah. Um, but the games, uh, I mean, it, you just have to look at it. There was. A, I was just going to say, about, yeah. Like uh, if you if you're thinking right now, listeners, that this this information is best presented in tabular form, you are right. Yeah. And Taylor There's, has put those tables in the in the piece. I like this piece, Taylor. It was it was really cool. Uh, it took me so long. It took I know it took you than... a long time because you every every ten minutes you took a break from it to bother me on Hangouts. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. You, you know Taylor's working hard when he's uh, you know chatting you up. It is yeah. true. So yeah. um, go check out the piece because the link is in the the description. And and um, Taylor, I'm going to let you finish. But when you are done talking, I want you to turn off more of your devices that are using Wi-Fi. Oh, they're all off. So mm. <laughs> then you better talk to your ISP. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, I was just saying that I compute. I, I compared like music streaming. So uh, iOS has iRadio and I, or iTunes Match and iTunes Radio. Uh, Windows Phone has Xbox Music and Google or Android has All Access. So I compared those: um, SkyDrive, iCloud, and Google Drive. I compared the prices of all these things just to see which one and all of its native uh, software offerings were cheaper. Uh-huh. So okay, yeah, so. Th- it was actually pretty did you, did impressive you, because Microsoft is cheaper in just about everything except for the games. Which is which is impressive because generally the smaller platforms – I don't know if generally is the right word, but I seem to recall smaller platforms taking some heat for having apps that were – fewer apps that were more expensive on the whole. I remember yeah. that being a complaint with uh, – I think it was BlackBerry – not BlackBerry 10's ecosystem, but when BlackBerry 7 – when RIM launched the BlackBerry app world on BlackBerry 7, like some of the apps that were $10 on other platforms were like 30 on BlackBerry and so on. Yeah. But so. it was always that way for BlackBerry. Yeah. It always was. Like, uh, I remember sense. IM Plus. IM Plus back in the day. God. Like right now you can get premium IM Plus for like, I don't know, 5 $6, I think. Uh, back in the day on, on BlackBerry, IM Plus was uh, <laughs> it's like $50 for a pro <laughs> membership and gold was like 100 That is hilarious and awful. And yeah. also, uh, I am plus. I had such a bad experience with it on WebOS that I never wanted to use it again. But uh, it, I was going to make a make a mention of something, 
and I don't remember what it was, so I think we're going to have to power through it. It's annoying because I think I've – oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Avoid the balls. Did you buy it? Yeah. I, yes. Yeah, I totally <laughs> bought it. It's a cheap little crappy <laughs> game that costs $300. It, On Windows Phone only? Is it an exclusive to Windows Phone? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it looks terrible, and the best thing about it is it has a trial and then a paid version. The trial is unlimited. You get no <laughs> new features for paying $300. So. No, you do. You get the balls become smiley faces. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, yes. Come on, Taylor. <laughs> Stop misrepresenting this awesome product. I want to meet that developer. I just love moves like that where it's like, yeah, here you go. Here's our, here's our price tag, Microsoft. I, I, Put that up. Right, right after mentioning it in the article, I, in parentheses, I wrote, please don't buy it. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> well, gentlemen, show, th- Taylor, thank you for your work on that. That's a cool piece. And you, sh- you guys should go check it out, readers. Um, don't, don't, don't continue the fight in the comments. Yeah, uh, it, I, I ended it with uh, with one swift motion. The guy was like, "Did I scare you away? Why haven't you answered my questions and stuff?" And I said, "You didn't scare me away. I have other things to do with my time, like write more articles, so you have something new to complain about." <laughs> I saw that response and I just <laughs> laughed immediately. It's like, yes, uh, yes. But there's some good there's some good feedback down there too, and there's a lot of people yeah. who are like, "Hey, thanks, man." I'm like, oh, "Cool." Yeah, it was a lot of people liked it, and I, I, it made me feel good. Like my time was well spent. It was well spent. It's a good piece. <laughs> um, Let's also, adding the top 100 apps on each platform was probably the most annoying and aggravating thing I've ever done in my life. I know. I know. <laughs> it really was. Because I'd get to, like, uh, maybe 60 or 75, and then I'd forget which app I was on. I like, so that, you have, like, I like that you have, like, Stockholm Syndrome about it now. Because, like, every time I keep trying to shift away from it, you keep bringing us back to it. Go. Move. <laughs> Thanks. I'm just, I'm just doing my normal uh, segue kill. I know you are. You want to talk about the Galaxy Note 3? Because I want to talk about it. What about Brandon? Sure. I want to take Brandon's vote because he, he, he wa- tuned out 10 minutes ago. I want to know about the Galaxy Note 3 because I was considering it for personal use. But the problem is TouchWiz. And Taylor complains about TouchWiz a lot. And uh, Michael a little bit less. But um, I don't know if that's true. I think yeah, I complain I'll- about TouchWiz an awful lot. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll put it this way. TouchWiz, if you could pick and choose what you wanted in TouchWiz, it really wouldn't be that bad. It's like um, the, I, the, the cable programming, the, the cable TV programming argument. Like, if you could pick and choose what channels you wanted to pay for, it would be a way better experience. Yeah. If you could but have a la, TouchWiz a la carte. That's what, that's what we should do. Yeah, yeah. They, they load it down with a bunch of crap you're never, ever, ever ever going to use. All right, let me play let me play a c- counter argument here. But Taylor, uh, so what? Uh, we have a bunch of features on a phone and if you don't use the half of them then don't use half of them. What's the harm in having them there? Storage space and performance. Oh, I don't understand. What do you mean? Uh, well, the system image for the Note 3 is uh, pushing 2 gigabytes after install, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe before. I can't remember. No, it's before install. After install, it's like 5, closer to 5. Um, for comparison's sake, stock Android is like 150 megabytes. <laughs> no, really? <laughs> yes, yes, really. Holy poop. <laughs> yeah, download a system image for like a Nexus 4 uh, for Jellybean 4.4 or 4.3 on uh, Google's website. It's like 160 megabytes, I believe. Versus and like a massive 1.9 gigabytes, I think. For touch with. So you yeah. have all this stuff that's sitting there. Even if you don't use it, it is, it is sitting there not necessarily actively utilizing system resources. It's just being big on the device. And even on the Note 3, uh, now this is the Exynos version. So, you know, hey, I'm not talking about the Snapdragon here. We'll wait for Taylor's impressions on that. You can detect the slowdowns. You can see, you can tell when you're waiting for those. Uh, you know, that, that processor to, to spin up so that it can deal with this heavy layer sitting on top of Android. So I've been using a, um, a couple, or I, I had been until I sent the phone back. I used a couple custom launchers on the Note 3 like two days ago. And be, when, the, when I, the launcher would dump me into the app drawer because I was using something or I was using like it was so much more enjoyable to use the stock Android app launcher uh, or app drawer rather. Because yeah, I can't it wait. It's just so much more responsive. Everything was responsive on that phone when when all the touch with stuff was dormant. Yeah, I can't wait to use Action Launcher on the Note Three. Uh, it, yeah, that. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, <clears throat> but the funny thing is uh, the gallery. So I've <laughs> I've had a problem. I showed Brandon this video uh, just before we hopped on this podcast, but uh, I've had a problem with this the the touch with gallery for 
three years now? For for decades now. <laughs> yeah. So it was bad on the original note. It was bad on the note two, and it's probably even worse. I haven't experienced it myself right now, but uh, it's probably even worse on the note three. The problem is, if you go to your gallery, you're probably just looking for pictures. Probably not even the pictures that are in your Dropbox or Google Plus or anything else because you can't do anything with them but look at them. You can't download them from the gallery. At least you couldn't before. I don't know about now. But it, Samsung's gallery app asks you to sync all of these things straight to your gallery app. Right, which is cool. And I mean, it's when that was introduced in WebOS 3.0, I was like, oh, cool, awesome. Yeah, I'm and, use and this. it's part of that is part of stock Android. But... Uh, Samsung adds in Dropbox and Picasa, or not Picasa. Uh, yeah, whatever. It, it, it adds in a bunch of crap. Yeah. A bunch of crap. So you go to open your gallery, and sometimes it's boom. It's right then. It's there. It's open. And other times, um, the video that I'm talking about it's is from, from Ron Amadeo from, from Ars Technica. And uh, he hits the gallery. He opens the gallery, walks off, gets a soda from his kitchen, drinks the soda, and the gallery is his car. So, yeah, <laughs> it takes almost three minutes. It's two, two minutes, 50 seconds or something before the gallery actually loads. And I do remember this problem from the Galaxy Note 2 as well. Like, the, yeah. the, that was an, an issue that I had uh, a lot. Let me, so, let me ask best, you guys. Yeah. I, let, me, let me ask you guys a question because obviously TouchWiz is up for uh, a refresh, a redesign, a rethinking uh, a because diet. of these. A diet. These issues. Gallery takes forever to open. The interface is so big, blue, clunky, and disgusting. Samsung has really proven itself to to be awesome with hardware. I mean, they, they their devices are fantastic. They can make thin, light, beautiful devices. They can iterate quickly. Mm. But something they've never done, as far as I can remember, and I'm thinking back to the Windows Mobile days with the Omnia, they've never been able to make like a really delightful, nice UI. HTC struggled with it, and they kind of did it, I think, with, with uh, Sense, Sense 5. Sense 5. Uh, Apple did it with iOS 7. Um, mm. LG is sort of uh, ha- half there, half not. Mm. But, like, do you think Samsung has the capability to reform TouchWiz so that it matches the amazingness of its hardware? So I I hesitate. What I wanted to say initially was that only with new people. Like, I I envisioned an entire office being repurposed and a a massive wave of hirings. And and, because I I really think that there's some kind of. I, for some reason, they're invested cultural, in. Cultural? Cultural investment in, yeah, uh, whatever the, the blow yeah, is behind touch. I think with. it's a cultural, I think there's a cultural and regional, like, design disconnect. I really do, because if you look at uh, my UI or MIUI, whichever you want to call it, and uh, I can't pronounce it, um, the company that. Uh, Xiaomi? Uh, Yukabara. Yeah, Xiaomi. Uh, those those companies and the, the interfaces from that region all kind of look similar. Um, since used to, if you look back 2008-ish, 2009-ish, since used to, and now they've kind of changed and dropped and simplified with, uh, with the change in, in UI design for all platforms, um, cause all of them are going flat and, and simple. So I, I don't know, maybe that's just bogus or, or something that I've m- made up in my mind, but I think it is because you, you look at these interfaces from, from the Eastern world, and they all look kind of similar. And whatever the reason behind it, I mean, if that's if that's valid or not, uh, I I think Brandon, you you are right in that Samsung has never really managed to create a UI experience that people have that's taken people's breath away. And that's a little hyperbolic, but certainly Sense Five gets closest to, in the Android world for me to doing that. And Samsung, no, has never has never really spent the time. But I think HTC should give us hope in that regard because, as you say, the earlier versions of Sense were just – I mean, we, it, before I even got into the business, I mean, they were mercilessly made fun of on all of the oh, – yeah. um, on, on all the, you know, the sites that I read. And now they have something beautiful that's really widely respected. Of course, now the company is in the – you know, it's, it's on a steep decline as far as yeah. profits go. So, I, I don't know. I mean, that that's the, that's really where I stop too. Because yes, TouchWiz is awful. It's heavy. It's bloated and it's ugly. And yet, tens of millions of these units are going out the door. Can I can I explain to you through a small snippet of sound what I hate most 
Only about touch if whiz? you accompany it with some interpretive dance. <laughs> yes. All right, here we go. I know this is anyway. Oh, no, it's not even there. Oh, I got to turn the volume up. This is... Oh, oh. There, oh, there we go. Oh, oh. Check your, check your roof. Your roof is leaky. Uh, Stuff like that. Just... Mm. So you don't like the Nature UX elements? No, not at no all. One, no one... I mean, remember when uh, Samsung introduced Nature UX on the Galaxy S3? They were like, we want people to feel close to... Like, wh- this is tech. This isn't meditation in a field somewhere. <laughs> hey, guys, yeah, listen, it was listen to this. Listen to the sound. Listen. You know, you know what sound that is? What? I did it with my mouth. I it know you like did a it water. with your mouth. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? I've been yeah, working on that for that. years. You're like Cameron in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So, finger popping. Yeah. I, and and I, I think that we're going to see this, guys. I, we have seen touches of uh, elements of Samsung's future. We stopped talking about the Galaxy Note 3 for some reason, but we, we've seen elements of what could be one possible future for Samsung in the Samsung Hub. Which has this kind of nice? There's like this Helvetica Noy, you know, font. Um, there's Wilds and Noye, 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 whatever. Yeah, w- <laughs> did you, what? Did it's your did typeface you guys, pronunciation right. Did, did you guys hear that the, an alternative name for the Galaxy Note Three was the Galaxy Bloat Three? Ah, sizzle, <laughs> run, no, no, so like there's there's all kinds of this. There's all kinds of hints of where Samsung might go next, and I'm I'm really yeah, looking yeah. forward to seeing it, but. I don't know. I'm very, I'm also very impatient for it because one of my favorite things to do is just pop up in the notification tray on a TouchWiz device and just be like, bloop, and show all the options. And I'm like, wow, nine, not 90%, 80% of this stuff is either feels unfinished or isn't necessary. And that's just too much. There needs to be some restraint. When you I think, I, I, think I figured out what the problem was. I, I don't care. I was, I was still on hold with Brandon. <laughs> You've been oh, yeah, on a phone call for an hour. Yeah, yeah, yes. we've been having a side conversation. You know, you know where like it, it just it, it makes me want to like you know vomit uh, when I see you, you, the screenshot of the um, the quick action menu where you've got r- reading mode, blocking mode, multi window screen mirroring, Wi Fi hotspot, SB, and M- NFC, AirView, Air gesture, hands free mode, GPS, yeah. smart bus, smart scroll, sync, smart stay. Yeah, it's it's that thing I was just talking about not a minute ago. Yeah, it's uh, just just to see it in this in this screen. It's just like, jeez, what? I know. Now it's just you, awful. you wouldn't expect that this is a device. Given the way we've talked about it for the past ten minutes, to talk about the software, you wouldn't expect that this is a device that would earn a nine out of ten. You would, you know. But if, here's the thing. This is why you need to take things in context. Um, despite all that, the Note Three is the most one of the most powerful devices I've I've handled. And what what does that mean? Like it multitasks? What what is that? Yeah, like if you can envision a situation where you will need your smartphone to do something, the Note Three can probably do it. And if you can't imagine features that you would want a smartphone to have, the Note Three probably has them. So in this sense, yes, it's worth putting up with the occasional, you know, bit of bloat or the navigation inconsistency or, or, or just the ugliness of the software to actually get things done. Yes, multi-window, very compelling. The S Pen, really compelling once you start using it as like a mouse to navigate the, the, the OS. So, did yeah, you, was... so you, you, you guys still find yourself, you know, like sitting there and, and, and holding the phone in one hand and using the S Pen as if it was your finger because it's a little bit more precise. Is that all what the, it is? All the time. Not just because it's more precise, but it also lets you get your hand further from the screen, which means you can see the entire screen and it also is just more comfortable in some situations to hold. So the S Pen, like I never use it for doodling. I was going to do this piece yesterday. Samsung launched this Instagram-like app uh, called Pen Up, which lets you doodle and then share your doodles on your Galaxy Notes. And that's a cool idea. But I don't care about it because I never draw on the thing because it's not yeah. comfortable. I, I don't like writing on the Galaxy Note. I like using the S Pen for everything but writing because it's still just so impractical to me. It's like, I, uh, what's I your spent, number? Let me write it down on this yeah. smooth screen. It doesn't feel good. No, I spent uh, about two hours setting it up last night. So downloading all the apps, logging into everything. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I typed with it, so I, I uh, on the actual keyboard. I typed with the S Pen. I, I didn't put the S Pen up for two hours. I just sat there with the S Pen the entire time. Why? I don't know. I just felt compelled to use it. Like and, I, that's how I've always felt about the Note. Yeah. I just pull it out and I use it. And when it's not there, you really miss it. Because I switched back to the HTC One last night. 
And I was uh, doing some photo editing because I'm getting a wedding present ready for my friends. And I'm just like putting a collage together on my one because that's the phone I use to take the pictures of them. And I was like, man, I really wish I had the S Pen right now because I could manipulate these a little better. And I could, you know, do doodle and things like that on them. So it's really compelling. Once you, once you get used to, used to it being there, you really do miss it when it's gone. Yep. The one thing I will note about the Note 3's S Pen is they've changed it. So, yeah, it goes in either way. Um, That's but, what she said. Uh, uh, but <laughs> hey, guys, hey, guys, thanks for the appreciation for that fantastically <laughs> timed. That's what she said. No problem. No problem. I, yeah. I like the, uh, you know, the, the, you know. All right. Cool. Continue. So. <laughs> but the tip is rubber. So it, <laughs> that's yeah. what she said. I just, I just, I just knew, it was I knew it was happening. I knew it was coming. I knew it was. Oh, oh but, uh, God. We're oh, never going to get no. out of this. No. Three in a row. <laughs> Somebody stop the it. The podcast stop just man. imploded. Oh, Sorry, I am now. so thanks, immature. Thanks for listening, everybody. So That's been jokes. the Pocket Now Weekly 64. Uh, join us next time. No, go ahead. <laughs> I, I want to so, have a serious discussion no, about it, the S Pen. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, what, it, what is the it thing you're going to It creates traction. Say? Like, yeah, the like, tip grip. is new. The tip is new, and I like that. It, it took me a while to get used to because the other ones were like a hard plastic. Mm-hmm. So you touch them to the screen, and they just like fly off. This one, it, it, <laughs> yeah. there's grip. But so it, it's it's – Different. That's the number one thing I was asking for. I was asking for an S Pen that felt more like you were writing on paper with like a felt tip marker. And yeah, I like it better. You don't like it better? Uh, maybe I just haven't gotten used to it. Like, yeah. I did over time, uh, but and comes- at first, like, I was just trying to swipe. And, and I think maybe the tip actually gets a little more uh, worn and it, as you use it a little more. And it comes with spare tips. It comes with yeah. five spare tips with with tweezers in the box, which I didn't know what they were on the unboxing. So oh. I was like, oh, what, what are these? But I just looked at them and guessed. So Isn't that cool? And then, wait, but Taylor, you, your AT&T Note 3 did not come with headphones in the box. Is that right? No headphones. So wait, is that because it's a second wave review unit and like somebody else just forgot to put them back in there? Or is that because it's not included? Your guess was as good as mine. Can you find that out? I mean, because I want, yeah, I want to find that out because it's, it's, it's one thing for, for AT&T or any carrier to, to take the device out of its original box, which might be a little tacky, but it's at least still high quality, and put it in their own absolutely crappy box. AT&T has the worst boxes I've ever handled. Uh, the box that it's, came in it's was quite like another falling to, like, apart. It's quite another to remove uh, accessories uh, from the manufacturer. Who just did this? LG, uh, Verizon took the earbuds out of the G2 box, and so did AT&T, which... That's cray, yo. It's just so freaking petty. Hey, uh, hey Taylor, a have bucks. you, uh, you – know, th- this Exynos version uh, seems to have uh, uh, the occasional lag. I'm not talking about the photo gallery, but, uh, you know, uh, you know in, in, in the review video, you see kind of Michael f- sliding from screen to screen. Sometimes screens have problems, um, you know, being as responsive as they should. Uh, with the Snapdragon 800, which is the best CPU in the world in my opinion, uh, is there any lag? Um, I, I noticed some yesterday, but that was during setup. So I was doing a lot of stuff. So I was downloading uh, Modern Combat Four and Asphalt Eight at the same time. <laughs> how is uh, how's as, how's Asphalt Eight on it? I haven't played it yet. The phone died right after everything finished downloading, so I haven't played games on it yet, dude. Um, when you start playing Asphalt Eight on the Note Three, you will you you, you need to plan for it, okay? You gotta, you're, like, you're, okay, your you're, yeah, you're not going to get any work done, man. I, I'm telling you, you fire that up, and you're just going to be stuck to it until it dies. And if you plug it into the wall, you'll I, still you're, play. You'll, you'll just sit down ne- the floor. You'll, you're going to stop <laughs> eating, dude. <laughs> it's so um, amazing on that. So, so you're I'll saying it's a good have, diet plan? It's an excellent diet Ooh, plan. You wouldn't you know get it. back on that. Yeah, I got to um, get back I also on have that. A too. Mogo did did I you just slap your belly? I did. I did. Hey, hey, what do you guys think, black or white for the Note Note Three? Black. I'm going black. Why? Fingerprints. Ugh. Uh, no, you don't really see the fingerprints on the leather. Yeah, not on the leather. And plus, the, what, the white is just way, way, way too smooth and slippery for me. Wait, wait. there's a difference in texture? Yeah, we said that at the top of the show. The black one is, uh, is more tacky. By the way, uh, that's what I was going to say before. Taylor, when you get a chance, go into the Samsung hub on your new Note 3 and, and look at the book collection. And see if I like the to best pretend set. that place doesn't exist. Well, yeah, check up on it and then make sure that Samsung's content store is still offering like 
really cheap looking erotica in the first like <laughs> ten titles of its of its top twenty bestseller list. I am a connoisseur of cheap selling erotica. <laughs> <laughs> the Samsung Hub is I just oh god. Oof. It, it's it's obviously so pivotal to Samsung's long term strategy, which I, I, maybe I'm a crazy conspiracy theorist, but I kind of think Samsung wants to build their own OS, which they're sort of already doing with TouchWiz. Uh, and it, obviously, they want to have their own content store because they've built it. But ugh, there's so uh, much Tizen. crap in there. They're 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 moving everything from Android to Tizen. Yeah, I'm calling this. They're 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 building up their content store and everything, and then they're like, "Hey, you've bought stuff with us, so now you're going to use Tizen." <laughs> blah, blah. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's for a bigger discussion, and we'll we'll get to more on the Note Three. Taylor, I originally thought was going to do a review rebuttal for my uh, to to my review, but I guess Taylor is doing the full AT and T Note Three review. So congratulations, I am, Brad. Technically, it's it's different. It's because totally it because a, it's a Snapdragon eight hundred, and and yeah, all the other the Miracast stuff that comes with it. The new GPU. Uh, what else is different in the Note Three? A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff for that one. Oh, wait, wait. Do you uh, do you have the 4K recording mode? Uh, let me check. Is there any I'm benefit trying... to that uh, today? Like, if you <clears throat> it's future proofing the device. Yeah. So if you buy a 4K TV, you'll be able to play back the content on a 4K TV, and it'll you know use that resolution. That's the only real benefit that I. Can it just say. says 4K. Really? Yep, you can record you can record videos at 3840 by 2160 resolution. However, you cannot record in dual camera mode or take pictures while recording. What? No, you can't use dual camera mode, dude. I Total want my 4K. crap. Jeez, I want to have my return. I want to have my face, my responses <laughs> to this is happening. Send it back to Samsung right now with a note that just says returned with thanks. <laughs> don't like <laughs> <laughs> Just just don't like. <laughs> I have a uh, I have, I have Facebook stamps to that effect, like and dislike. Uh, so, Michael, I have yeah. a question. You had the Exynos version. Was yeah. that one also affected by the quote-unquote benchmark cheating? So that is something we were going to talk about very quickly. Uh, we, I have not been able to confirm or deny that. This was the result of an awesome story at Ars Technica by the same guy who made that video we were talking about earlier, Ron Amadeo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name properly. Did some awesome sleuthing and found basically that Samsung, which has already been in hot water for cheating on benchmarks with its Galaxy S4, and cheating, I would normally put the word in quotation marks just so that we could get both sides of the story on this, but really it's it's not. It's It's legit cheating. Uh, <laughs> Samsung has repeated that behavior with the Galaxy Note 3. And certain benchmarking apps, such as Geekbench, when the phone detects that Geekbench is opened, this uh, the, the behavior of the device changes, and it, over, it immediately spins up the processor to maximum... Yeah, it, yeah it maxes program. all four cores. Or, yeah, yeah or. exactly. So what... Uh, and this is a brilliantly genius move. It's just so simple. Uh, what ours did was create a... Uh, just, just take the Geekbench 3, like what, the APK? Just took the entire app and just changed the, the app's name. And so the phone was running uh, Geekbench, and they changed the name to Stealthbench. But because they changed the name, the phone did not recognize it as a benchmarking application. Ooh. And so it left everything as it normally is. And the result, the scoring disparity was about 20%. So the phone is bumping, is, is juicing its benchmark scores by about 20% for a wide variety of benchmarking apps, which is just freaking hilarious. Uh, yeah, the, we ha I, the, I don't want to say we. I hate benchmarks, and I try my best never to use them because I don't think they tell you anything worthwhile except for people who are not really in our audience. So I, I don't give a crap about benchmarks. But this is just transparent, hilariously corrupt, dirty shiz. Yeah, the, what everybody was saying is that uh, any any app should not affect how the CPU works. It should request like how the CPU should ramp up by, you know, needing more resources, mm -hmm. basically. So instead of that, Samsung did the opposite and said, you know, you need more resources and <laughs> ramped up the CPU. And yeah, so it was, it's just kind of dirty. It's, it's really definitely, dirty. It's, the, it's the shady dude in the baseball dugout going to the players being like, you want a little shot of this? 
You want to just just yeah. just let me just stick this in your arm real quick. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be fine. You'll right. be fine. I promise. You yeah. won't notice anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I, is I, that back me? Uh, you'll be fine. So, uh, <laughs> so you know, is this? <laughs> I just got that. So is this is this important? I uh, you know I don't know. I don't know if this is important to you. Should it stop you from buying a device? No, because ultimately the devices still perform very well. Except that Exynos one kept freezing up on me, which I was really kind of mm, scared of. After a minute, uh, scared. Yeah, so uh, we'll find out if the Snapdragon one has that has a similar issue. I don't think it will, uh, but I don't know. I mean, Brandon, how do you feel about this? Do you do, are you offended by this? Are you put off by this? Would you would you would this change your buying behavior? I mean, it's ridiculous that they would do it two times after the world got so upset by it. I know. Yeah, and I mean, I, especially since it's so easy to discover. Like, I mean, ours has posted screenshots of the link, and it's just so funny to look at the code. It's like, okay, if you see a benchmark, do this. And it's like, okay, okay, <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, here's another. Uh, the Verge posted this morning: top Android device manufacturers reportedly rigging performance test scores. So it's it's more than just Samsung because Antutu back in December posted on their blog: stop cheating. And they were calling out several manufacturers that were doing what Samsung did. Um, so it's not just Samsung. Samsung just keeps getting caught for it. Yeah. Um, according to Anantec, Anantec, uh Samsung, HCC, LG, and Asus have all altered some of their devices so that they will perform unusually well during popular benchmarks, which are yeah. often included alongside we, in-depth That's a good point. We, we've, we've picked on Samsung a lot this podcast, and you're making a good point. We need to make clear that they're not the only ones who do this. We we were contacted by a, a manufacturer who I won't name. It's basically like, hey, so uh, what benchmarks do you use? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so I use my yeah. naked eye, and I, I just <laughs> I guesstimate it by looking at it. I can tell what's fast and what's not. I can see frame Taylor, rates. <laughs> are you doing a southern accent with your southern accent? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. More southern than southern. Um, actually, I met someone uh, last week, and they were uh, asking me how I said something. They they said, I can't say mountain correct. English is not her first language, and she's like, I can't say mountain correctly. And I was like, what? What do you mean? She said, I say mountain. I was like, that's how you're supposed to say it. And she's like, no, I want to say it like you say it, mountain. She couldn't do it. She couldn't do it. She couldn't say mountain. mountain. It's like I can't I roll trying, my R's. I made yeah. roll my R's. Yeah. Mountain. mountain. So mountain, important. Uh, Umbrella, insurance, TV. You know what I'm saying? So let's it's talk like, about yeah. our fingers, shall we? The Note 3 review is up. It's got a 9 out of 10. I like it a lot. Uh, but at the same time, I am a little... Glad to be not carrying around a big device anymore. Taylor's Note 3 review will be up soon for the AT&T variant. Uh, but neither of these phones has a fingerprint scanner, so, you know, flip a table and get angry about it. But there are phones coming out with fingerprint scanners, again, in addition to the Moto a, a tricks from years ago and that weirdo Windows Mobile thing from, like, 10 years ago from HP or whatever that was. And uh, we finally have a payment system, it looks like, to take advantage of it. One of the first, I would imagine. What is this thing called? Be Beatbox or Bebo or Bartong? That's a really interesting product name. Now, this is a South Korean um, payment system that looks like... I, I have no idea if this could picked up. Like, it doesn't matter what the payment system is, what the back-end stuff is. It's not even in our markets that we cover yet. The point is... It's one of the first ones, if not the first one, to launch for Android that lets you authenticate purchases with your fingerprint. And that's pretty cool, I think. I'm pretty Until jazzed somebody about this. steals your fingerprint and then starts buying stuff. So we're going your... to talk, talk about that when we get to <laughs> listener mail, absolutely. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. I, I think that um, this was a given. This is not a surprise. Android has to keep pace with, uh, with what Apple is doing. Apple's not even doing this. Apple's doing fingerprint authentication for not only unlocking the phone, but for iTunes purchases. And Brandon, have you used your 5S for that? No, it, it it's well, I yeah, like one time, but I I don't I don't use the fingerprint thing on an ongoing basis because it really? requires you it requires you to have a pin unlock, and I still think it's faster for me to just go right past the lock screen, uh, you, you just with a slide. Any authentication? Uh, well, what do you mean for the iTunes Store or just for your phone for the phone in general? 
Uh, well, for the iTunes Store, that still forces you to enter your your pen, your password, every time, right. right? Sometimes, not all the time. So, wait, can you set Touch ID to only to prefer uh, only the iTunes authentication and not the unlock screen? No, because you have to have a pen unlock. Set right. Up, so you don't do that. So th- that's funny. That surprises me. I would think that you would go for that for some reason because that's that's one of the main compelling things about the 5S for me was that thumbprint scanner. Yeah, you were you were freaking out over it during the Hangout. I'm pretty amped on it. It's such a cool idea because I I also hate uh, pin unlocks. I think they're well, no, a big waste Brandon of time. Was, oh, what? Well, Brandon was freaking out about oh, it. Was he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, well, before they announced it, I was like, this is going to work extremely fast and it's going to work very well. And it, that's that's what happened. Yeah. I the future. <laughs> <laughs> but, and yet, yet you don't use it. I mean, so I, I, the thing is... I'm jealous already of the 5S because I see this happening on Android in the image from the story about this fingerprint-based payment system, Bartong. Um, the d- demo woman is using a device that I guess is a Pantech phone with a fingerprint reader on the back. We know, or we almost know, that the HTC One Max is going to have a fingerprint scanner on the back below the camera. It, immediately, I'm a little bit turned off because the idea of a fingerprint scanner integrated into the home button on the iPhone just strikes me as a much more elegant solution. It's, I'm very yeah. jealous of it. Well, can, can I pose a counter-argument? Yeah. Um, I have the, the G2 sitting right here, and I don't know about the other models, but the Verizon model is different, and the button configuration on the back of the Verizon model is different. Mm-hmm. They're not tactile, and you can't really feel what you're touching. I'm not surprised. So it's, yeah, it's impractical, and I hate it. I hate it, and the knock feature on my G2 just doesn't work. So hey, I, think, I still think this one's... Both. Yeah, I think this one is still defective. I don't know. Uh, but but the counter argument is that there is a phone with a little divot on the back where your finger should go, right? Moto X. Moto X. Moto X the dimple. Moto X. Yeah. That little dimple is one of the coolest things ever. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is the tiniest little most insignificant thing, but it is amazing, and it's in the perfect location and that's exactly where this fingerprint scanner is so what if your finger's just laying there anyway so that makes it's sense. not a power button yeah it's not a power button so you don't have to press it you just touch your finger to it just like you would on the yeah. iphone but if it's the only thing back there if they're not 10 buttons back there then you really don't have anything to worry about you know what you're touching that's true. so I, I like the location of it i think it's practical and if there were one integrated into that little dimple in the back of the moto x it would be perfect oh that would be hot yeah see, i see i i dig that so okay. i mean the the, the, fig, the fingerprint thing if it is great i mean some people have pin unlocks all the time they have to do it for work or they just you know they're around lots of people and they need to have security but these fingerprint th- systems uh, they if, if it, it's going to be commonplace in the future it needs to work across multiple apps like for example uh you know credit card apps banking apps they they don't save your password you always have to type it in and usually it's like a secure password with an uppercase lowercase and numbers mm-hmm. that's where i think it would be a huge time saver well, it would, but I. This is just me. I'm a very narrow, non. I don't count here, but I use LastPass, and uh, that means that I just copy paste passwords, and then I'm done. So when I want to do something, I open LastPass, and copy what I need and paste it in the app, and it takes two seconds. Um, something like that. I know what you're saying, though, and I, I totally agree. Having something like LastPass integrate with my fingerprint and talk to other apps would be awesome, but security would be terrible totally <laughs> awful it would be so awful wow. so because it would have to save your fingerprint if i'm not mistaken to do something like that it would have to have something to authenticate against you know yeah. what's funny yeah we're we've got a couple a couple mentions in in listener mail of the fingerprint scanners this is obviously something that that people are talking about at large um i've been a little surprised by how like my friends don't seem to care about it uh, my normal friends uh, so I don't exactly know how, how much of a big deal this is going to be right now, but I do predict that in about a year's time, these will be, if not commonplace, then at least common enough that when a phone launches without one, uh, at least some people will be like, oh, come on, what, there's no fingerprint scanner? Come on, Maybe. it's like an accelerometer. I, I don't know if we're going to get there. I think it might be a or, little bit niche. Or NFC. Uh, I have a question, and this is off topic. Um, didn't oh, they say that? Yay! Didn't they say tech tiles would not work with newer Samsung devices? The NFC tags? Yeah, yeah. 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 You had to get like tech tiles 2.0. Yeah. Well, I just touched a tech tile to my Note 3 a few minutes ago, and it worked. 
Huh. Huh. NFC's stupid. NFC's <laughs> awesome. I can love I, NFC. Can I talk about, can I, can I do a little this tangent here, but I think it'd be worthwhile? Yeah, sure. I, I've come up with a really cool, and maybe it's not original, uh, way to make passwords. Check this out. So you got to have a password for Amazon, for Twitter, for Facebook, for um, so many different things. And you shouldn't have the same password for everything. So check this out. This is, this is what I do. Let's take the example of Amazon. So you put Amazon into your browser, right? And you're looking at the words Amazon. So start off with a word. It could be any random word, like um, speaker, you know, like a the computer speaker. Then add a number to it, maybe a number that you know, maybe your your address, like 15. So speaker 15, and then the last three digits will be dependent on whatever the password is for. So if you look at Amazon, it's spelled A- A-M-A-Z-O-N. So the last three letters will be the first three letters of the thing that you're doing. So it would be speaker 15 A-M-A. For Facebook, it would be speaker 15 F-A-B. And you create this like What's it called? It's like this code. And it's, it's unless people figure out what your code is and how it varies, they won't figure out your passwords. And it's different for every different thing. Did I explain that right? So for a minute there, my brain was like boiling and falling out of my ears. But now <laughs> I, I think I get where you were going with it. It's, it's kind of like an authentication key. It, it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, that's very smart. Uh, I have forever been seeking a, a simple template for that. But, I don't um, even know my own passwords. LastPass knows your password. Yeah. Yep. My my passwords are like uh, like twelve bit and uh, all like alphanumeric capitals. Like I, I don't even know what they are. I just randomly generate passwords and copy and paste, and it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna drop a uh, a YouTube embed into the podcast description, so after the show, you guys can think can watch a small clip about what I think is the best password ever. Okay. Okay. So cool. One, two, three, four. No, no. <laughs> Different. <laughs> uh, let's uh, close out Android real quick, Taylor, unless you wanted to talk about something else for 20 minutes. Yes. Um, <laughs> nearly. <laughs> is that even. Do you really even have to ask? Uh, nearly 50% of Android devices now run Jelly Bean. So uh, this whole fragmentation thing has. Uh, it's coming to an end. Yeah. Um, no, finally. it's not. 50%. Uh, it is. 50% is. Is one out of two people? It's a it, yeah. It, and and of the other one out of two are using something else. It's still very fragmented. And but it's, it's going to be. It's, but it's, it's totally like it's, different. It's totally different because you're not looking at one operating system. Android in itself is like ten operating systems because you've got Sense, you've got TouchWiz, and in their own right, they are operating systems. Um, just like they're just different distributions, like Linux. Um, everyone using Ubuntu versus anyone using Red Hat, they're different operating systems, but they're built on the same platform. So with this, uh, plus what Google is doing by upgrading Android without upgrading Android, you know, moving all of its services and apps outside the the image file. So that's why Android is so small because Google moves uh, Gmail and all these out into Google Play. So they're all upgradable without having to update each and every device. So, yeah, they're, they're working hard on this because Ice Cream Sandwich uh, was really hardly ever over 20%, if I'm not mistaken. It's 20% now. But it stayed that way, and it took forever to get there. Jelly Bean in just over a year has gone to 50%. So it's finally, finally moving much more quickly. Hmm. <sighs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for that. I, I got the opportunity to plug my Pre-3 in and, you know, dust and things like that. Oh, yeah, I love outdated stuff that doesn't even matter anymore. <laughs> like like arguments about <laughs> fragmentation? Yeah, 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 exactly. Similar, similar, yeah. similar area. Beats Audio, still planned for upcoming HTC models. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think this is cool. We talked about this last week. HTC and Beats getting a getting a merciful divorce. And uh, that being said, there are still some devices in the pipeline. It sounds like the HTC One Max is still going to have the Beats branding and the Beats equalizer installed. But uh, I I don't know, guys. I think this is probably just stuff that's remaining. To, to, this is like their to-do list. You know, it's like, all right, we've planned these devices six months out. But when we run out of devices that we're supposed to have beats on them, this is no longer going to be a thing. 
Yeah. It's also like an annulment. HTC is like, you can't leave us. Yeah. And then everybody's like, please leave them. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I do like uh, the, I do like the the um, there's some backlash in the comments on that one because people as always started complaining about beats and I, we we talked about this last week I'm not a big fan of beats it just cranks up the bass and the volume and that's whatever but um, finally some people were like you know what shut up if people want to overspend on on headphones that they think are nice then th- they should do that and I'm like you know what you're right you're right there's no I mean I overspend on stuff that nobody else cares about so hey buy what you yeah. want guys be be free with your money. Let's move on to Windows, please, because I'm tired of being an Android. Is that cool? Windows yeah. section is like five minutes long. We <laughs> This Nokia tablet is real, I guess. It's, it's got FCC certification. And uh, I guess that Verizon logo on that leaked photo that we posted was, was uh, maybe legit. Because the RX114 tablet from Nokia got approved by the FCC. And judging by the frequency supported, it could very well work with AT&T, T-Mobile, and or Verizon. It's LTE bands 2, 4, 5, 13, and 17 for LTE. So I don't, I still don't care, personally, because this is um, an RT tablet, which I'm... I, I, well, we're going to get the Surface 2, right? Brandon, did we just talk about this yesterday? Yeah. We're getting the Surface 2. Um, that's going to give us another close look at Windows RT on, on modern hardware, and that'll be fun. And maybe there will be a reason to get excited for this, but it's, are, it, how do you guys feel about this thing? I mean, is anybody jazzed about this? It, I think uh, uh, I think in a way uh, Microsoft is trying to think of, like, how can we give some legitimacy to RT because it's kind of dying. And they're throwing the Nokia gun at it, but uh, but that's bad for, for Nokia. 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 Nokia, 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 Lumia. Yeah, I I think you're that uh, that has some merit, Brandon. I mean, yeah, the Surface line is is doing okay, uh, but it's not certainly not doing very well. <laughs> this is kind of a contradictory statement. Hour, welcome to it. Mm. Uh, but like throwing the Nokia brand at something is kind of like saying like, hey, you remember this brand? We're not going to have it for much longer, so check out this Nokia tablet. Yeah, I don't care. I mean, I, I would <laughs> care if it were a, a Windows 8 Pro tablet, but... I would be all over it if it was an Android tablet. I would not. Oh, yeah. Or if it was WebOS, that would be even... There you go. Thank, thank you. There you go. What about, I was kidding. Oh. Nokia hardware and, and WebOS, that'd be a beautiful relationship. It'd be kind of like Mego. It'd be kind of like the N9. It would be great for nostalgia, but for usability, it would be awful. Yeah. Because yeah. WebOS, you know. Yeah. You know. Advice is a form of nostalgia. Microsoft talks need for focus on low end going forward. This is a very important, and this is why it's in the, the rundown, because with I think that's where Nokia has seen a lot of its success, right? In, in making yeah, low the end phones for emerging markets. Yeah. And the 520 is like, five, the 520 gets all this praise all across the internet. I think we reviewed it twice. <laughs> <laughs> because like Adam Lane had the regular one, then he had the Home Shopping Network one, and it it makes sense that it gets all this praise, I guess, because it's it's a very low end phone at a very very effective cost effective price point, but it's also not a bad phone, and that yeah. those things usually don't go hand in hand. So it's cool that Microsoft is actually openly acknowledging that this tactic is going to continue, which only makes good business sense, right? Because that's where they're getting a lot of their growth from in Windows Phone, which gets us to the next point. Yeah. Hit it. Yeah. Is Windows Phone a threat to iOS? Is it? Um, I, is it, Taylor? It is. Will you say it that is. on the podcast right now? I will say Windows Phone is a threat to iOS. Breaking. And, and Taylor Androids, Martin reports Windows Phone better than Apple. Internet explodes. <laughs> and and it's a, a threat to Android's domination, not Android's success. And it's not a threat to iOS's success, but it's a threat to their dominance. Um because it is growing. It's it's only 3%, like 3.4% market share globally. So but it's, it's a strong huge. 3%. <laughs> it is because... It's a dry no, heat. No, no. It's a dry heat. It, it is because um, if you look at all these smaller emerging markets, Windows Phone is bursting at the seams. Um, in Germany, I think it is, it's 1% less market share than iOS. So iOS has like 9% and Windows Phone has 8 um, and in many countries, it's outselling iOS. So it, it's growing and it's gaining some traction. And once it just gets a solid foothold in these smaller markets, it's going to start growing bigger. That's where Nokia just absolutely dominated as the number one 
cell phone manufacturer in the world for however many years. Low end. Yeah. yeah low end. Yeah. That's, it, it's, it is a legitimate competitor. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it, it's funny because we've seen this tactic not work, too. Look what's happening to BlackBerry right now. I mean, you, you have these, this company that had these devices in emerging markets and in, like, I've, I don't know what the term is, but I will, I will call them secondary markets, um, where it's like everyone was addicted to BBM because it was a cost-saving alternative to SMS. But now even those markets, like BlackBerry's share is just imploding because it, it didn't work because people are, are more and more focused on... Um, on ecosystems and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, but catering to a catering to a low end market doesn't mean lack of innovate, innovation, though. You still it have, to innovate. have to. It, it doesn't have to. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah, and I, w- that's something that we're really looking forward to seeing from Windows Phone because as of now, I returned to my Lumia 1020 alongside the HTC One the other day, and I, it, was, it felt good to be back on Windows Phone after a few weeks. Um, and I haven't yet gotten like re bored of it, like bored of it again. But I, I am really anxiously awaiting the next round of improvements to the OS because some of the functionality gaps are starting to get to me in the UI. So, when are, when is that when are we due for that, Brandon? Which one? The micro, the next round of Windows Phone improvements from Microsoft. That's a that's usually a late fall thing, isn't it? Yep, Windows uh, Phone 8.1. 8.1, yeah. It's yeah. not going to be should, that, that much. It should have a notification center-ish sort of thing. It's going to be huge. Uh, They're going to spend like 40 minutes on that at the presentation. Yeah, yeah, they are. I mean, um, that, there's, they're not going to. I mean, it's going to have 1080p support, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, it's going to have multitasking. better multitasking, quad core support, and uh, that's uh, about it, right? I mean, we haven't really seen much about it. And they're going to add two more colors. Uh, two more I, color accent colors. Yes, very good. I'm very much looking forward to writing my piece on what I want next from Windows Phone because there is a long list of things I would I would like next from Windows Phone. But it's yeah, a it, color will. Yeah, so right. we've talked about that. Yeah, but I also yeah. want the the me and people hubs to be re- renovated because, like, the the Twitter integration was awesome in 2010, and it hasn't seen any improvement since then. Like, there are features in Twitter now that are not that that are not supported by Windows Phone because Windows Phone hasn't moved in that area since 2010. So it's like, what's a favorite? You know. Anyway, is uh, I, I I'm glad to hear Taylor that uh, you think Windows Phone has a fighting chance. Do you yeah. think that we should get into listener mail before Brandon Miniman has to take off? Can we do this in seven minutes? That's the real question. <laughs> no. Let's try. <laughs> All right, let's give it a go. Try. Then we'll give we it a try for lack of trying. in listener mail. Let me Brandon, read the second one, okay? Brandon, why don't you go ahead and read the second one? And since you have to go first, why don't you read that now? Okay. This is from Andreas Zavertov. Yes. Latvia. Latvia. <laughs> yeah. H- Hello to all Pocket Now team from Latvia. Great work, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question about using fingerprint scanners for security purposes. We all know that even big companies quite often make mistakes in passwords of users getting hacked and becoming publicly available, or at least available to the black hat hacker community. For example, not so long ago, Evernote lost 50 million passwords of its users. I remember that. <laughs> yes. Currently, companies deal with it by resetting passwords for all those affected. But what will happen if Apple were hacked and fingerprints together with user personal IDs gets, gets leaked? You cannot reset your fingerprint, right? What that Turn it means, off. If you just, oh, yeah, here's what you do, uh, Andres. You just take a razor blade, go real deep, make sure you have a doctor nearby. No, the thing is that the, um, the Touch ID stuff is stored on your device to prevent this exactly from happening. And I imagine that all future fingerprint security will not be backed up, and that you know if you have to, if you get a new phone, you have to re-enter your fingerprint. Yeah. So what what I've read on this actually is that now there is a way to hack a fingerprint. I threw some links in here uh, in the description, and there have been some stories on this already. Uh, the blog uh, Schneier on security has covered this. In the comments, there's some really cool stuff. Apparently, people have already hacked this. You can take a photograph of a thumb pressed against glass. You take a 2400 DPI photograph and then you print that on a special kind of transparency using a special kind of ink and then you th- you moisten it a little bit, you throw it on the fingerprint scanner and it it fools the iPhone. So yes, you can do this. You've been able to do this forever, but it, the the method of stealing that fingerprint seems so convoluted that that route is not the way to go. And then 
there's a lot more effort apparently involved in trying to grab the fingerprint information from the device. How is it protected? Do, do you guys know? Uh, it's encrypted. It's Whatever that heavily means. encrypted. Yeah, uh, right. but, yeah, well, I'll, I'll put it this way. It took uh, a day or one, two days, two days for someone to hack Touch ID. Two right, days. but what does that mean? Like, what does hacking Touch ID mean? Like, I mean, did, did it steal the fingerprint data and then reproduce that fingerprint data elsewhere? Because that's, for me, that's the only thing that's really a, a concern here. Or a, a big, the biggest concern, rather. So, uh, uh, in reality, so, so they already hacked fingerprints, uh, I guess, doing that, capturing it while it's saving. But the, the hacker said, in reality, Apple Sensor just has a higher resolution compared to the sensors so far. So we only needed to ramp up the resolution of our fake. Okay. So that was, I think that was a security feature of Apple Sensor was that it was such a high resolution that it was harder to fake. Uh, but it now looks like someone knows how to do that. So you're going to be able to hack <clears throat> I anything. I, I think the big concern here and the, 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 the question asked in the, in, the, in the letter is like, you can't change your fingerprint. Yeah, if somebody steals your passcode, you can change your passcode, but you can't change your fingerprint, so what do you do about that? I, I, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, it seems like a, that's the argument everyone's going with, and that's, that's the question I can't effectively answer you, despite having you read You provide it. a blood sample. <laughs> yes, yes. You sw- you swab your cheek when you uh, try what, to access. What we your need, phone. yeah. What we need is a fingerprint scanner that also does a little finger prick and mm-hmm. and takes some DNA each time you log into right. your phone. And you that's know, the like first six phase of, of the authentication. And then the second phase is a retina scan, <laughs> and then you have to do a voice print. Yeah, yes. and then it analyzes your your scent, your unique scent. And then you can, <laughs> and then you ur- urinate into it and then you poop on it and then other bodily fluids come out and then uh, got then, there. then you can send a tweet there. yeah it's called lymphatic lock and it's coming there, soon you know, a give it, giving uh, giving blood to, to authenticate your password is a uh, great way to stay in shape it's a great way to stay in shape <laughs> alright uh, well um, Andres I'm sorry we couldn't answer your question more effectively but this is stuff that uh, people are going to go back and forth on for for a very decades. long time yeah and millennia we will yeah. try, try and learn more about this and, and come back to you. I, it doesn't sound there, like it, but I actually did research this before I came on the air, and I, I just got more confused than I started out as. So There is a website called IsTouchIDHackedYet.com, <laughs> and, and there you can uh, see the status and how people actually um, have hacked it. One is called Starbug. He has faked the Touch ID fingerprint sensor. So I don't know what I'm watching this now, but it's several minutes, so I'll just uh, send it to you. Yeah, he's he's doing what you were saying, scanning it and everything. Yeah, and you know you know what they don't tell you is that you can use other body parts to unlock your phone, like your nipple or your. Uh, uh, actually, that's very true. Yeah, because people have been doing that since like day one, which is crazy. They they the, the feature is called nip unlock. I still like playing with it in the store. I like that you can do it with a toe too. Anyway, yeah. I unlock my phone with my nose. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, but X, guys, I got to I got to jet, out. right? Yeah, Brandon, thank you. We're going to cover these other two pieces of mail, and then we're going to jet as well. Thank you for coming back to the weekly. It was lovely having you back. Cool, guys. See you later. Good Take day. Good day. See Hello, you, governor. <laughs> what you just did, Taylor, was, was exactly what I don't want you to do on the outro. Take it Good. easy. No. Goodbye. <laughs> I guess Goodbye. I'll see you next time. I'm that just was doing Jaime. my Eeyore impression. Jaime was the, was the downer a couple weeks ago. Yeah, he's, he's like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, Andres, thank you for the for the listener, listener mail. Um, Taylor, go ahead and read the next one, which either one of them, and I'll finish this out. All right, I'll start with uh, Christopher Drummer because I can pronounce your name. Yay. Hello, Pacanel team. My question is simple. Google needs to hate Microsoft, and that is no, fine. Seems, seems, seems to. Seems to. <laughs> <laughs> Google seems to hate Microsoft, and that is fine, but I believe it is a safe assumption that almost all Windows Phone users use Google Apps in some respect, and the cry for Google services is great. Could Google simply charge for Google Apps on Windows Phone, say $1.49 for YouTube, maybe more for Google Hangouts, etc.? Do you think anyone would purchase these apps? Google doesn't care about the price um, because people who use their services earn them money anyway because through, through ad sales. Uh, so that's not the, the big issue. Uh, the big issue, I believe, is not even recognizing Windows Phone as a major competitor yet, maybe. I don't know. 
So, Taylor, your point is exactly on point. Uh, on point, Christopher, you make a really compelling case for a simple fix to this thing. It's like, hey, j- j- guys, just charge for it. It's okay. We'll pay for it. Like, I, I see that argument a lot, and I agree with it. I would pay. I'd pay like. I, 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 what's the most you'd pay, Taylor, for a full Google suite of apps on Windows Phone? Because I'd probably pay up to. I might pay up to a hundred bucks for it for real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I seriously would because I, yeah. I, I would use Google Plus on Windows Phone so hard. Uh, yeah, I, I miss it all. Plus. I miss Google yeah. Google Drive, Google Voice. I mean, I would want all of that, but I would pay up to a hundred bucks for the whole for the whole damn thing. But I would do it not only because it would be available to me, but I would do it because it would improve the quality of Windows Phone for a lot of people. So many people, absolutely. Because it, you you search yeah, something Google integration isn't isn't good. Yeah, God, you search Google in in the Windows Phone store, and you get three thousand fake apps that look like crap. They're like three or four dollars a piece, yeah. and they do absolutely nothing. And some of them are good. So the maps the maps replacement is pretty good. The, Metro uh, Talk, Metro Talk is good. Metro Tube yeah. is good. Go Voice but was other, good for a while. Metro, t- yeah. So. Yeah, so Christopher, this is but this is a pipe dream because, as Taylor said, this is not their business model. You know, yeah, Google doesn't care what you pay for ad- the apps, right? Just like take our apps for free and then look at all the ads we put in front of you. That's their thing. Uh, yes. So not only does it not align with their business model, but also yes, you're right. Google seems to hate Microsoft. It's not that they hate each other; they're just in very, very stiff uh, competition. And I think their ad departments are not helping out with this <laughs> animosity because they just no, seem to be not. taking stupid pot shots at each other. More yeah, so, Microsoft's more like, so Microsoft. Hey, that stupid buy a surface. Like, right. That's pretty yeah. much what their ads say. Well, but they, and that's the Apple thing. But I mean, like, you know, don't get screwgled. You know, that, yeah. that absolutely you childish, everything. stupid nonsense. And all companies do this for whatever. And, as much as I, I respect Balmer, um, I, I hope those ads die with his retirement. I really, really do. Well, um, it's, it's the ad house. I don't think they're, I don't think that's, I mean, of course, Microsoft has to sign off on it, right? But, yeah, I don't know who they're using for those for those ads, but I, whatever. See, it, it, the, the thing is, yeah, we're not going to see it. Um, that would be really awesome, but uh, yeah. Christopher, I, I think we're, we won't we won't be seeing that until Windows Phone is a legitimate force to be reckoned with in many more major markets. Then Google will be forced, I think, to or not forced, but it'll be in their best interest to to make apps for Windows Phone because it's like, okay, now we have a certain number of millions of eyeballs on content on Windows Phone. Well, let's go ahead and craft these apps and uh, and do it. But even then, there's that competitive... It, it will depend on Windows Phone's growth rate compared to Android and threats that Google perceives from Microsoft and that. you know, I think it's all factors into this threat analysis because they are competitors. It, it's, yep. it's easy to forget that because Google makes really high-quality apps for iOS, but those... They're, they're Google and Apple are competitors, and yeah, but Microsoft makes really high quality apps for all three platforms. Right, and but Microsoft has to. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And I want to say, like, I'm glad they do because OneNote is. I would. I'm starting to. If if OneNote had a desktop application for Mac OS X, I would already have switched over because it's so much better than Evernote for me. But that's a whole other thing. I really like OneNote a lot. Anyway, uh, shall we move on to the last piece of mail? Uh, why not? All right. Christopher, thank you for your email. Uh, this one, last one is from Nathan Bramwell from Connecticut. Hey, guys. I just want to tell you guys how much I love your podcast. I listen to it whenever I mow my, whenever I mow my lawn, which, funnily enough, pays for my phone bill. Hey, that works out nicely, Nathan. Uh, I'm 14 years old, and I'm obsessed with tech. I currently have the HTC One, which I love, and a Galaxy Note 8.0, also a great tablet. That's a pretty good pair. Uh, Anyway, with all these HTC One Max rumors coming around, it makes me wonder, who is HTC competing with? They're packing in a fingerprint scanner, which would be to compete with Apple, but also the size of the phone is close to that of the Note 3. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much, guys. Keep it going. Thanks for your email, Uh, Nathan. Who's the HTC One Max competing with, Taylor? Well, I think it's HTC grasping at straws, honestly. Um, Everyone else has made a giant phone, Sony, Samsung, uh, LG, and HTC hasn't yet. So they're, they're like, hey, this seems to be working for everyone else, or at least everyone else is trying this, so we should too. And uh, it, it is a direct competitor with the Note, I do believe. Yeah, the Note 3. Uh, and that's scary, isn't it? Why was it? Why would it be scary? I mean, for HTC, I think it's frightening. I like we're seeing rumors of a of a stylus for the One Max, but I don't think it's going to be built in. I think it's going to be this strap. The whole uh, oh god, what was the thing back in the day? 
the one with the uh, the flyer. Oh uh, the yeah, smart the, pin. Oh, what do they call it? Yeah, it had like ba- I think it, it was had a smart pin, a battery in it. It was an active it was eighty dollars. <laughs> yeah, eighty dollars. So, so I for a really, stylus. really hope that doesn't happen. Now, that, that's what I'm I worried will about. Say, I will say that it was compelling. Now the price and the battery, they got that wrong, but they actually kind of did an S pin before the S pin. You know, they they did. It came with its own suite of features. It wasn't just a stylus. It right. had its own feature set. Yeah. So they they poorly I, I know, integrated it. I know, it, but and I, I do think I do think that if the stylus doesn't go into the device, if it doesn't have a home inside the device, I think you missed the boat. And yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, I I'm but, not going to carry one with me. Exactly. So exactly, we, we spent first the first like <laughs> we spent twenty minutes earlier in the podcast like talking about how the S Pen is is really really cool in the Note, and I I'm not saying that's the only dif- that that's the differentiator you need uh, for a phablet. I'm not saying that you need a stylus to make your phablet successful, but it really helps. And if you don't have anything else going on. Um, it, it it can only help you. And Samsung does have a lot of other stuff going on. They have awesome multitasking. They have stuff that uses the acreage of their large screen. And that's where a lot of other large size devices have fallen flat. So I'm really hoping the One Max doesn't just arrive like one of these other big devices, like the Galaxy Mega, for example. It's like, hey, well, the Mega has multitasking. That's a bad the bad example. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, wait, wait, did yeah. it? What? The Mega? I don't know. You review yeah. it. I know. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> well, anyway, I know they left off a ton of features on that phone, and I think I think multi window was one of them. I can't remember. Well, Nathan, I you I think you're maybe looking at a red herring with the fingerprint scanner thing. I think that's not an indication of what it, the One Max is trying to compete with. I think it's just they're bringing out a fingerprint scanner because that's there's going to be a lot of those in the next few in the next year, like we said earlier in the podcast. At least that's my prediction. Um, so I don't think that indicates that it's trying to compete with the iPhone necessarily. I think the HTC One and its derivatives will continue to directly compete with the iPhone at the smaller level as well as they can, I guess. But the One Max is yep. definitely playing in the yeah in the Note 2's ballpark and in the in that of the well, what is the Z1 that big? Or the, you know, the yeah. 1520 from Nokia that's coming. The it, it's the, the the big the big version. And I yep. join you, Taylor. I really hope that they're going to be bringing optimizations to justify and effectively use that screen test because if they don't it's just going to be a big HTC one and that's not going to be enough yeah uh, there's, that, there's no point there's no value proposition added yeah to, yeah it's just a bigger screen and if you're not going to optimize it you might as well have a smaller one <laughs> right uh, <laughs> exactly and we're going to be seeing the uh, the one max pretty soon I'm guessing because I mean with the leak rate increasing the way it is we uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it very very soon indeed so Yep. Let's keep our eyes open for that. Nathan, thank you for the uh, email. Hopefully we answered some of your question there. Uh, thank you for giving us a chance to speculate and to complain a little bit about big screen devices. Yeah, Can I, can I just add that uh, my favorite thing about the S Pen and the Note 3 and, and any Note for that reason is AirView. I didn't use it. I hated it on the S4. But the, the fact that I can just hold the S Pen towards the bottom of the screen to scroll is yeah. one of my favorite things ever. Yes, absolutely. It, it so is because I don't – it, it, flicking and scrolling with the S Pen is is okay, but just holding it towards the top or bottom of the screen is so know, nice. It's so rad. I know. That's one of my favorite things about it, too. I'm glad I'm not the only one anymore. Yeah, I, I will buy the Note 3. I will. For real? Yep. Wow. wow. I'll probably buy it on T-Mobile so I can get some unlimited, unlimited LTE. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy that. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. T-Mobile doesn't yeah, work at my enjoy house. Enjoy that. I'm, I'm bitter. Well, listen. Well, it works great here. So I, uh, don't hate. You and I don't hate. Appreciate. You and I are going to be back on the air in about uh, four hours, and my voice is already starting to die because I'm a throat talker, contrary to my great vocal training. Well, and as uh, as work. a smart move on my part, I'm going to go get some uh, some pho. Yeah, some, some Vietnamese pho. Yeah, sounds like a good idea, bro. Yeah, it is. I'm going to yeah. go get a wrap. So anyway, before yeah. we go uh, bow, bow, before we go into uh, our, our further lunch plans and so on, I think we should close this out. So Yeah. Uh, can I add that I'm super excited for this weekend? Just one last thing. Uh, I'm going to see Google Glass. I get to play with it on oh. Saturday in Durham. So if anyone else is in the area and you've RSVP'd, come say hey to the Google 
to me at the Google Glass event in Durham. That's so, uh, ten to six, rad. and I. Yeah, so I'm going to go there, and on my way back, I'm going to the uh, exotic car lot because I love cars. Ah, uh, that sounds really cool. I dig that, and you've reminded me of something I can't talk about, so I won't talk yeah. about it. Well, I'm doing all this by myself, so some you can feel kind of sorry for me too. <clears throat> all right, I'll see if I can fit that in. <laughs> hey, uh, for now. Taylor, thank you for joining me. That is going to do it for this episode of the Weekly. Uh, find us on Twitter. Brandon is at Brandon Miniman. Taylor is at Casper Tech. And as always, you can find me at Captain Two Phones. Follow Pocket Now officially at Pocket Now on Twitter, as Pocket Now on Instagram, Facebook, and Google Plus. And you can share opinions with other listeners online at forums.pocketnow.com, which I just spammed last night with a lot of messages. It was really cool. If you enjoy the podcast, please leave us a review on iTunes or Xbox Music. And if you have a topic, question, or suggestion for the show, or you just want to say hi, we actually do need more listener mail this week so that's fun email us podcast at pocketnow.com and keep them brief please thanks for listening everyone thanks for your mail thanks for everything we'll see you next week that is not that is not how you sign off from the show (laughs) oh